it going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought it'd be fun to revisit one of my abandoned projects and try to give her a new life. So here we can see I have a Barbie head that I've given horns and a very shoddy paint job. This was before I even started using chalk pastel. Oh, my voice broke. This is before I even started using chalk pastels. So I try to like get the blushing in with paint. That's why there's like this big chunky black everywhere. And then I figured I'd go back over it and, you know, clean it up later, which I guess would work, but I don't need to do it that way anymore. So I thought we would give her a new lie, throw a fresh coat of paint on her and try to find a body for her to go on. I'm not entirely sure what body I'm going to use yet, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So let's get started. Alright, so first I decided to go directly in with paint over her old face. And you'll find out pretty quickly that that was a bad idea. Uh, because of the dark shading I had and the poor coverage power of the red paint, I had to do so many layers and it ended up chipping on me as you can see here so I decided to just wipe the thing and start over because of the red paint and how much was on there this ended up looking like a very gruesome process it looked like a medical emergency it happened in my art room with how many bloodied cotton balls ended up in my trash can Now here she is with her base as clean as it was going to get. I decided to leave some of the paint on her horns and I can go in with the paint once more and it's so much smoother and so much easier to apply the second time around. This is a good idea. If you're doing this exact thing, I always recommend starting with a clean base. Here she is about three coats of paint later. It's dry and I'm able to go in with her face up. Those of you who are familiar with, you know, doll customizing and follow other doll customizers, you probably notice that I, I do things a little bit differently. A lot of them use the watercolored pencil, Mr. Super Clear chalk pastel method, and I don't do that. Um, not for any particular reason besides I just don't want to spend money on Mr. Super Clear and a respirator so that I don't have to worry about inhaling it. And also I'm really impatient and with Mr. Super Clear you have to wait a really long time to let it dry before you could do anything and I like to be able to just get right in there and start painting. So I decided that it would be neat to give her white pupils. That wasn't what I was initially trying to do, but I just was afraid it would end up getting too dark on her face. So I thought it made her look kind of magical and reflective. And now I'm doing the shading around her horns. I like to sort of stipple the base of horns to break up that transition between horn and skin. I just think it looks better. And I'm also a fan of a classic ombre horn, you know, just make a little gradient. I think it looks really good. Now here I'm adding even more speckling in a lighter paint around the horns and down the side of her face. 
I take a quick break to lighten up her lip color, and then I give her freckles. I just thought it'd be really cute. Like I said, I didn't really go into this face up with a plan, and she just ended up being really cute in my opinion. But she's not quite done yet. I still have to add the chalk pastels. And for red skin tones, I like to blush with black. Um, I just think it looks good, though I suppose it's more contouring than blushing. But obviously you can't do traditional red blushing because it wouldn't be able to show up anyway. I, you might see me flipping her upside down a lot. That's what I do to sort of uh, get the opposite side and make sure everything is even because it just is much easier for me. And here you can see me going directly in with the like stick of the pastel itself to draw on her face. I like to do that for highlights just because uh, you get better coverage that way and then you brush off the excess. And here she is with her face up done. I still have to seal her, but we'll get into that after we do her body. So here I'm cutting off the serial numbers and I sand her down to prep my base to paint her. Now I'm just painting her body with the same color I used for her face. Just going in really thin, you know, s smooth layers to get the best result that you can, though. Uh, painting dolls is always rough. You will still probably end up with cracking, but you just have to try your best. Now I'm blushing her body the same way that I did her face. Uh, gotta get the boobs. I also like to get the sides and just sort of bring in the waist a little bit. My favorite part is getting the little belly button. I think it's so cute. And now I'm doing the same thing I did with her face of going straight in with the stick of chalk to do the highlights and brushing away the excess. Also at this point it was to get the skin tones to match directly because it added a little bit of an orange hue that wouldn't be there if I didn't do it. Getting her joints and here you can see me realize that she had two left hands. So I had to take it off and put it on the right side and She's just not going to have a hand for a little bit. I'll address that later, but that was really frustrating to notice so late in the process. And now to seal both of them. So I like to use Matte Mod Podge and water it down so much. I don't have an exact ratio. I just sort of eyeball it till it looks like the right viscosity. Um, for the body, I like to go a little bit thicker, and for the head, I do it really smooth, and I usually do about three coats of that to make sure that everything is secure. You have to be pretty careful to make sure it doesn't pull up anywhere, because it can make the pigment do weird stuff in that space, and if you wipe it too much, it could also get a little weird. It's a finicky process, but it gives the... A result that I'm happy with. Now I'm adding some Mod Podge directly out of the container onto her horns. That way they're a little bit shinier than the rest of her skin so they stand out a little bit. I don't own gloss varnish. That would be really good for this but you know. Now here she is with her head reunited with her body at last. 
For outfit, I decided to rifle through my ribbon collection and pull these ones out and very like Valentine's Day -y colors and make a little outfit for her. I measure out each piece of ribbon, cut it, make sure to heat seal the ends so they don't fray. And then you glue the ribbon down where you want to go. I'm putting this across the her lower back because the other skirt piece I want to make would have left that exposed. Here you can see me making the rest of the skirt piece, just sort of wrapping it around, measuring everything out. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of an asymmetrical moment because usually these dolls have a little bit of a booty to them and this helps uh, prevent them from exposing themselves if you ever bend them at the waist too much. Now I'm measuring out her little belt piece that I just felt like it needed. A lot of this process is just sort of trying things out and seeing what you like and you know there isn't a lot of forethought that goes into it. It's like you do it and you're like what does this need and then you add that on. Sort of getting it adjusted, that way there's a little lip at the top. now to move on to her shirt. I just sort of cut out a piece like this and sealed it all around. It has a little bit of a like a parallelogram with a swoop in it and then added this other ribbon to tie around her ribs and then just get it lined up and glued on. Now to make her straps, I sort of did these pieces here. It was a little bit of a weird process. We can see how it just sort of wraps around her front and connects with the other side of her shirt strap in the back. And I did that on both sides to kind of create this boob window moment for her. You see it just sort of crosses in the back like that. And I unfortunately lost some footage of me finishing up her outfit, but I also did these little sleeve ribbon wraps around her shoulders, and I wrapped some ribbon up her leg to kind of create a little, a little moment. <laughs> now it's time to give her hair. I sort of blast through this process because if you're familiar with this, it's been done a million times before. You just measure out some yarn get it tied down. I like to unravel it before I brush it out. It just makes the process easier for me. And then you give it a good brush and you have some hair. I don't bother to flat iron it because I just, it's a, an extra step that I don't think it always needs. And now you start gluing. I like to add another layer of glue on top just to make sure that the top edges are smoothed down so they don't peek out through the next layer of hair that you glue down. I like to brush out the tops of the chunks of yarn that I use just to remove any more excess yarn up top that you don't always get out through brushing and it just makes it lay down smoother. And here she is with her hair all glued down. I struggled a bit with her hair for this. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do with it. And I tried this at first. I tried giving her a little side pony and then I decided that I hated it. So I came back the next day and just said fuck it and curled it to give it a little bit of texture and I didn't bother recording it. But I used this metal straw that got ruined in the dishwasher as like a thick 
barrel for her curls, and then I used this flat iron that I've had since I was 11 years old. It's the only one I've ever bought, and it still works, and I don't even use it for my hair anymore because I'm... I almost said I'm bald. I'm not. I decided to give her a little bow. <laughs> and once I got this bow on her, that's when everything really started coming together for me because I wasn't really sure what her this outfit was like it was sort of it had like almost a sci-fi feel to it but also sort of like a character in a fighting game but once I put this bow on I realized that she looked kind of like a magical girl like I've never made a magical girl doll before and that definitely wasn't my intention going out I was like oh I'm gonna make like a traditional sexy demon um, but instead, she ended up being this little magical girl, and I decided to add some extra little glimmer sequin pieces to her, uh, her bow, and these little, like, wrist gauntlets to sort of tie that together. And because I decided that she's a magical girl now, I was like, she needs, she needs a staff or something, some sort of thing to tie that together, otherwise it just wouldn't... It wouldn't be right. I found these little jewelry pieces that my mom gave me ages ago. This like faux earring and this real earring. And I painted this dowel baby pink and painted this earring gold to match the other piece. And I decided to use those to make a topper for this little staff. Um, I lost the footage of me wrapping ribbon around the dowel, but I wrapped a ribbon around a dowel. It's not that exciting. I made this little top to it. I glued it on. Um, here you could see I fucking loaded that bitch up with hot glue in the back to make sure that it would stay secure. And I added some extra ribbon along the back to just give it a cleaner look so it would look more finished than just having this cavern full of hot glue visible. Because even though you're mostly going to be viewing it from the front, it, it, it is good to make sure that your props are, you know, look decent from every angle because people will see it, you know? I finally got another hand to replace the incorrect one. I painted it red and blushed her wrist to match and add a little bit of baby pink nail polish because I thought it was absolutely necessary. And with that, she is complete. And we can take a look at her final, her final pictures, her final results. I am so over the moon with how she came out. Like... It was so difficult not posting her right away because I wanted to get this video edited first, but I, I've just never made anything like this before, and I, I'm just, I'm so happy with her. She's so much more interesting than if I had just gone with a straightforward demon. She's sort of like, I don't know, it's like you're from hell, but also you're in a cosplay or something, I don't know, but... Yeah, she's she may be my new current favorite, and I hope you guys liked her too. If you're really happy with how this doll came out, there will be a link in the description to my store where she will be available for purchase upon my uploading this, and you can also check out the other dolls I have available in my shop. It's a little bit bare right now because I've been doing a bunch of stuff, but... I usually like to add a new doll there every couple of weeks or so. Thank you so, so much for watching. This is my first doll repaint video. This is something I've wanted to do for so long. And I, I'm, just, I'm just so happy. I'm so excited to make more repaint videos. So subscribe if you want to see more of those. And like it if you had a good time. Love you. Bye.